This is a horror game podcast. It is meant for mature audiences. It may contain shocking revelations, violence, and sexual themes. Viewer discretion is advised. Fellow investigators, and welcome to our video podcast, Into the Darkness, where tonight my friends and I are playing the Unknown Armies role-playing game. I'm your host, Tom Rayleigh. The scenario is Lampposts in Bloom. It was written by Scott Dorward. Our game master is Max Meltzer, and this is a one-shot. So without any further delay, let's begin our journey into the darkness. Max? Thank you, Tom. We open on a tulip. This tulip is beautiful, mottled purple and white. It's jutting out of a flower bed uh, in a backyard. As we approach this tulip, we see caterpillars eating the edges of the leaves. As we get closer, we can see that the fur on the stem is covered in aphids and different insects, earwigs, Enter and exit the bud. The roots are rotted. Maybe we shouldn't have gone so close. Anyway, in this backyard, there is a cookout. Uh, four friends and relatives um, are cooking some steaks, and the scent wafts out from the grill. Uh, over the pool and over the backyard fence into the air of Seattle. And before we go into descriptions of these players, I want to know who's on the grill. I'm probably on the grill. All right, Jeremy. Jeremy's flipping over some steaks. Um, and Jeremy, you get distracted. You're looking out at the sky. It's clear. You were worried it was going to rain, but it's looking good. And uh, you look back down, you smell something charred. The steaks are burned. Is that like they shouldn't be because I've been standing here over him? Yeah, no, no. They. You just were absent-minded. You completely forgot about paying it. Attention. Shit, yeah. shit, shit. I'm gonna move them over to the side. Yeah. You cut them open and they are unfortunately the perfect the most horrible thing that can possibly happen to a steak. Mm -hmm. Completely burnt on the outside and completely raw on the inside. So uh yeah, these these steaks are fucked. Butchered. <laughs> Honey, do we have any more steaks? Oh, uh, let let me check. Let me check, dear. I and, fucked up. Uh, oh, I'm I'm sure it's the grill. Didn't you say you were having some some problems with the uh, propane jets or something? Evelyn, give me a hand. Could you look in the fridge and see if we have any more steaks? I think Jeremy's having some problems with the grill. Of course, hon. Um, you said in the fridge, right? Well, Jesus, I hope we don't have to thaw them from frozen. I'll check the I'll check the freezer as well. So uh, Evelyn's going to make her way, or I'm going to make my way into the kitchen. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I'll I'll scurry outside with a platter to retrieve the the burned steaks and get that get that out of my husband's head. So Jeremy, you, before they come back, I was going to ask you again. You said those dash cams in the uh, cop cars they just have these malfunctions sometimes. Well, yeah, you know. Uh it's, it's it's just funny that it, that it happens when violent incidents tend to occur after. You know, I think the police have been plagued with a lot of violence. There's good cops and there's yeah. bad cops, and I don't know. It's that's a hard thing to do. You know, cops are out there every day risking their lives. I mean, we we come across things like that all the time to keep everybody else safe and. 
I mean, we've talked about this before. I mean, I know, what does a cop have to do? I, you know, I've got a wife. Uh, I've got a life. And uh, so am I supposed to just let a, a criminal hit me or kill me or shoot me? And I do that five doorway. times a day. From the kitchen doorway, you hear, uh, I yell, Richard, would you leave him alone? It's, it's we're just, here to uh, have fun. Come on now. I know, but I can't help asking a few questions. It's just these insights are you're both off the clock, honey. Oh, <laughs> that's all right. I'm sure my brother in law is well meaning. I pat him, and as I take the platter over to Jeremy and give him a little peck and pull the steaks off, there you go, dear. Uh, oh, shit. And as you were, do we have the steaks? Do we have any more? We're we're working on it. Maybe just handle the burgers and the dogs first, and then we'll. Were there any remaining in the fridge? Uh, we'll get to that in one second. Got a bunch of them at Costco last time I remember, but we don't really fill it out for. Give me a second. I think I forgot something in the car here. I'll be I'll be back. All right, Uh, and Jeremy, you were talking about the tough situations you've been in, in police work. And, you know, why don't, why don't you tell us what, what's, what's an example of a situation that was, was really tough that you had to deal with in police work, maybe something dangerous. No, probably the worst thing that ever happened was, uh, there was a, there was a young guy, and I'd say, I mean, the all the reports and everything said that he was unarmed. Uh, I'm just talking about afterwards when the reports were put in. But what he had was the handle of a of a push broom. And he came at us. I think he was on PCP or something like that. And he came at us. The thing is, he could literally knock our heads off with that fucking broom. And what were we supposed to do? You know, so he came at us, we shot him, he died, but they wanted to, uh, all, everything in the media told us that we were at fault because we used too much force against this kid. And did we, did we not, were we saving ourselves? Were we justified? He just had a stick, and we just take the stick away. Nobody was in the situation but us, and things happen like that. But like I say, we all have wives and kids and stuff that we're going home to that night. And... These are the split the second decisions that you had to make, and it makes you feel a little bit helpless that now you can think of all the different possibilities. But in the moment, you know, you weren't acting with rational. And it's not like acting on it. it's not like we don't sit around and blame ourselves for things like that. I don't feel justified, but the fact is, it's my job to protect everybody in the you know, the majority from the minority, and I don't mean minority, but I mean the there's the criminals uh-huh. Uh-huh. i'm very glad they're not always that. minorities <laughs> yes <laughs> uh anyway and it's it's really journalists like richard that are really exacerbating the problem isn't it? yeah richard's okay well journalists like richard anyway look there um, are bad cops and there are bad journalists Exactly. And the bad journalists are the ones who make shit up so that they can make money. How how long ago was that incident, Jeremy? A couple of years, maybe. Yeah. It all kinds of blends together. Do you do you feel like you're in mortal danger like every month or every six months or every day? Well, it's it's kind of random. I mean, kind of every day. I mean, you never know when somebody's going to jump out and shoot at you. And the fact is, is that when you're at home watching television, nobody's going to jump out and shoot at you. But when you put on a uniform and you walk out into the streets, you're a target. 
Richard got about halfway to his car before he realized that he didn't remember what he was going to look for. And uh, in a moment of kind of frustration, he heads back into the backyard and uh, seeing Armin now uh, interviewing Jeremy, he tries to hide a frown that comes across his face for a second. Armin, oh, so great you could join us. I didn't uh, I didn't realize you were going to be part of this tonight. I, it was a little bit spontaneous, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, I uh, let's say I could smell the steak from home, or the hot dogs, as the case may turn out to be. Um, but uh, you know, you're. I uh, always anticipate hospitality uh, around here, so yeah, I'm glad I you know. And if you didn't see the, uh, uh, I got some of that uh, that. Belgian beer that that I know you're fond of. There's a couple of fixes in the fridge, um, so I can contribute a little bit. I didn't bring any extra steaks though, so fingers Where crossed. What are the steaks? I'm going to turn around and walk in the house. Sorry, I'm oh, um, sorry. I didn't mean to knock that on the floor. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> perfect. Wow, great role play. Um, <laughs> I'm just pulling my computer and then knock something over. So let's cut back to to the two ladies as you traipse back into the kitchen. Um, and who's looking in the fridge? Uh, Evelyn I was. All right, so Evelyn, you uh, open up the fridge, you feel the blast of cold air coming out, and you're straight to the meat drawer. You open it up. There's some salami and cheese, but it looks like there's uh, no steaks left. Oh, Sorry. No. I know Richard's talking to Armin again. And oh, now that you think about it, Evelyn, that someone is... probably should have thrown away those eggs a while ago. Oh, that's uh, it's a little close to home, GM. Um, <laughs> uh, I turn and say, oh, Natalie, are they going at it again? Or Natasha, I'm sorry. Um, I apologize. I, I got a little rough house at the hospital uh, a little earlier today. Oh, um, no worries. I know. It, they. I just, I try to make sure that nobody gets too rough with Armin. You know, he's, he's a little more delicate than Richard and Jeremy. You can see outside Richard's opened one of the beers that Armin's brought. And uh, yeah, he seems like like this is okay. Well, I seem to be getting along. Um, there's, I'm not seeing any steaks in the fridge, hon. Is there anything in the freezer? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll run, I'll run and check. Uh, no, no, I'll, I'll go check. Find it hard to reach the bottom of the well, coffin. Hang on. So, Natasha and I are in the kitchen. He Where just walked you? in. Oh, walked okay. In. No. I, I apologize. I no, missed you're that. You're fine. Oh. You know, I'll uh, check. If. Uh, if there ain't nothing in the in the freezer, then uh, I'm gonna have to make a quick run to the store. No, hon, I'll do it. I have some things I need to grab anyway. You know, well, woman let's things. Check and see. Sure. So I'm looking for anything, uh, hamburger. Yeah, and uh, Jeremy, you're you're uh, you're walking into the garage and. You open up the big coffin freezer. You see there's uh, uh, some baby back ribs in there. Um, but unfortunately, it's mostly empty. There's, there's just a lot of pork, but no beef. Yeah, and th it's not going to thaw out. There's some stock that you've been keeping in there for a years, but I guess it it's keeps. Turkey stock from last Thanksgiving. Uh -huh. Jesus. Uh -huh. She makes me do that fucking stock every single year and we never use it you um, never use it i touch it at least twice a year all right so you're gonna run to the Wait. store i will run to the store yes i had a few things i needed to grab evelyn you can come with me if you'd like or you can stay and keep your eyes on uh, the boys i think it would probably be best if i stayed and kept my eyes on the on the men folk as it were all right two shakes of a lamb's tail and i climb into the sedan and you start it up with maybe a little bit of trepidation. Brings back memories being in a car. 
And um, I brush my hair behind my ears. <laughs> Jeremy, uh, are you just going to go back out to chill with the? I'm going to go teams? back out. I'm going to grab one of those Belgian doubles and. Uh... Uh, before he leaves the kitchen, um, yeah. I'm going to uh, very stealthily and very swiftly, uh, as soon as Natasha's in the garage, give his hand a squeeze. Smell it here. <sighs> I know. Guys around, but I know. Everyone. Not just, a good time. Just don't let. I know he's been asking some tough questions, and I'll talk to him. Oh, uh, Richard doesn't bother me. Okay. And, and I'll just I'll turn dog. around and walk out. And Evelyn, you're standing in the kitchen alone, and. Um, you sigh, look around. Uh, there's some photos on the wall next to the stairs going up to the second floor. One of them catches your eye. It's Jeremy and Natasha. Or, sorry. It is not Jeremy and Natasha. <laughs> it is you and Richard. Um, and you remember your trip to Disneyland. You went there a while ago. It was fun. You drove down the coast to California. And that photo's always bothered you because there's a weird sort of gap between you two. There's a uh, space. But there's not space anymore. In, in that space, there's a child facing backwards. A Mickey Mouse balloon. The hell? That made me jump. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> right, it's, it's the timer I had set for the stakes, but uh, I forgot to turn it off. I am I'm really fucking this up. <laughs> With the background noise. Sorry, guys. It's great, man. Don't worry. As long yeah. as you know, as long as we don't hear the air raid siren and you put on a helmet, it should be all right. <laughs> oh, I'm waiting for the fire truck. There's going to be one. Uh, anyway, that's what you see. There's a little jump scare sting in there for that realization. That's so. Uh, I don't recognize this. This child was not present the last time I viewed this image. No, and he's facing backwards. You can see the back of his head. He's looking towards. Cinderella's castle up on the really tacky little fake mound. Um, what the heck? Um, can I like look at the back of the 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 frame of this of this photo? Like, I'm assuming it's a framed photo, and it's not like yeah, it's on Pepe Silva to the wall or whatever. Nope. <laughs> okay. Nope. Um, is there is there any writing on the back of this photo frame? You take down the photo from the wall. There's a little outline because that photo has been up for a few years now. Um, dust or grime around the edge. On the back, it says Disneyland 2019. And I'm, I'm assuming the date's accurate. Yeah. Okay. Um, hmm. I'm going to put it back onto the wall. Is there any change in the image itself? Nope. Huh. There's still a child holding a balloon facing backwards. That's in between bizarre. Um, well, uh, you know, I, I think... I think with uh, my experience in my profession, I know how uh, fallible memories can be. and um, But I swear I've never seen that child in that photo before. So I think I'm going to actually head out and uh, see if I can get Richard's attention just to get a second opinion. Cause that's, it's a having a person appear in a photo who wasn't there before, at least that you don't recall is uh, very strange. Sure. Hey, Annie, you need me? Yeah. Hun, um, can you take a, can you take a look at something? Uh, you remember our trip to Disneyland? Uh, oh. a couple of years ago i yeah i can i i didn't expect you to bring that up actually but yeah well, no um 
you know, Natasha's got a, a, a photo of us and there's just some details that I don't remember. And I'd, I'd like a, or remember being there. And I'd, I'd like a second opinion if you got a minute. Sorry, Armin. No, that's, uh, that's good. I'm uh, sort of messing with the uh, controls of the grill, trying to not just burn vast quantities uh, of fuel while there's nothing on it. And I, look I don't to know Armin, how any I look, of this works. I look to Armin. I look to Jeremy. I look back to Armin. I look over to Jeremy. I said, you got this under control? Sure. So, Armin, do you know anything about football? Um, I know the Dewey Decibel number of statistics on football. I understand that historically they called it a pigskin, but it hasn't actually been made of a pork product for a long oh. time. Uh, uh, yeah. I will giggle as he says the Dewey Decimal System of Sports Statistics, and uh, I will very swiftly sort of pull Richard into the house. All right. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, you, you've uh, definitely uh, brought a funny new friend into our life, haven't you? That's I, you know that's I mean, he's not a bad guy. Yeah, it's it's great. It's just adds so much, right? Uh, I mean, he's got tons of stories. He's he's he, uh, look. I'll be the first to admit he's a little off, but that's kind of what makes him interesting. He's not he's harmless. But anyway, that's that's not what I wanted. You to look at this, and I'm gonna like yeah. basically drag him over to the photo. <laughs> and uh, Richard, as you look at this photo it's a photo of you at disneyland with evelyn yeah i, I remember that trip that was great uh, so you were so freaked I out swear. about space mountain oh sorry so the You're... the that image is gone what image perfect okay yeah. <laughs> just what yeah think things things were better than weren't they I mean, they're not the worst now, Richard. But, but they were better then. Do you want me to say yes? Is that what no. you want? I, I d just like to know what's going on. I guess that's all. I, I mean, it, there are two halves to this equation, Richard. It's not just me. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I don't know if this is the, the time to have this conversation. Jeez, I kind of thought maybe there'd be celebrating, maybe or something. I don't know. Yeah, no, it's okay. Let's 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 go back out. We will uh, get you a drink. Yeah, no, no, no. What did you mean by celebrating? No, nothing at all, Richard. It's Evelyn, you know what? can you can, can can you not make me a villain in my own house? Let's go back out and guess, and, and hang out with your question. weird friend. Whose house are we at? You're at our house. I, yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Say, sorry. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, <laughs> back back into oh, it. Um, yeah. <laughs> Rewind. No, I'm okay. I'm sorry. Um, like I said, I got. I had to, you know, I had to handle a patient today. And it wasn't easy, and I apologize. Um, I'm a little stressed out. I was hoping yeah. to relax. So, thank you for coming in here. I, I clearly, I, you know, misremembered something, and I, I, I apologize. I get it. I'm sorry. I, I know how stressful things are. I, and I promise, I'm not trying to get Jeremy in trouble or anything. I'm not, you, you know, I, I know we talked about it and I know, oh. but it's just hearing some of the stuff. This is good material. He's got so many stories from inside that no, no cop is going to otherwise talk to me about this stuff. Otherwise, honey, I'm not, I'm not worried about you and Jeremy. I think, I think Jeremy can handle himself. And I know that you are a uh, tactful journalist. Um, nice. So, but, but, I appreciate you letting me pull you away and uh, yeah. let's go and rejoin the party and try to have a good time. Okay. Okay. Yeah. This sounds good. You know, I'll, I'll try. I promise. I'll try. Okay. We don't, we don't have to pretend, right? It's my sister. We're not, oh, we're not I, on stage. Know, we're, we're, we're lucky. You know what? I never thought that I'd get along so well with Jeremy. He's a great guy. He's really awesome. It's, it, it, I, you know, 
over time, I'm sure Armin will win me over, but I, I but let's go and be with the others. Okay. All right. All right. And uh, as you are going to head back to the um, conversation, you're right. It, it really wasn't the right time to have that conversation, maybe. Or maybe it was. Uh, you, uh, when last we left Armin, he was talking about how he wasn't such a big fan of football. Maybe Armin, maybe you like soccer instead. You're more of a European sports fan. It's, it's, they're both football. I, um, I don't, I can't yeah. say that I've ever entirely grokked the rules of either of them. Um, yeah. I've been to a few soccer games, what we call soccer. Uh, they're pretty, pretty intense, nonstop action. I mean, that's the thing. It's, it's funny. Like most American sports have a lot of waiting involved in them. Um, and soccer, like, everybody's moving all the time. I, it, it's slightly yeah. exhausting just to watch. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's the most popular beer. sport in the world. Yeah. Right. I thought you'd like it. Yeah. I mean, so I thought, I thought Richard would like double, it. Uh, yeah. I, I like beer. I like all different kinds of beer. Hyperbison and, uh, uh, lagers. Nice. And it's a, you know, it's, it's like, uh, like it's a good time for television. It's a good time for beer. Like we went from having a country where everyone drank Budweiser to there being local brew pubs all over the place. And it's uh, a lot more, a lot richer, a lot more varied a culture than it used to be. So question for the GM, how long have we known Armin? You haven't known him too long, Jeremy. Uh, you personally aren't really sure about him. You, you don't know much, much about him. Right. Yeah. Does he have a wedding ring on? No, he doesn't. Okay. So it's just something I'll assume that he's not married. Is he young? How old are you, Arm? 44. Oh. About the same age. In the same ballpark. I mean, I met no. Natasha first. I know you through Natasha. I knew ah. you know, the Oakleys yeah. through Natasha too. So it's a little bit mostly, you know, when I was working with Natasha, it was like it started out as a professional relationship and became friendly. Hanging out with all you people is a little newer. So um, and, if you don't mind me asking, so what's your story? Are you married, not married? Oh, uh, I guess serial monogamous, uh, monogamist with gaps. <laughs> yeah, um, I get that. yeah, I, you know, I have very, I have pursuits that can be kind of intense and then they change and I, my world changes and I don't know, it's don't always fit people into that very neatly yeah that's true that's true you're also a librarian that's kind of interesting where do you a library oh i'm at the public library no <laughs> idea where this is set well yeah i don't yeah. go to that library very often but it's, it's curious times. you know the the people don't appreciate how broad training is for librarians or how many things we do that aren't involved, that involves putting books on shelves. It's a really complicated part of a social system that people don't understand. Personally, though, I'd be perfectly happy if it was mostly books. Um, and the amount of time that I have to help people who are elderly or insane use the public internet gets a little taxing sometimes. I'm not Oof. a psychiatric nurse, but some of that training wouldn't hurt. Yeah, I, think I got. Uh... Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Tom. I was. I was just going to say I got. I was just going to anecdotal things. Uh, yeah, I got lots of training on how to deal with insane people and VCRs. My father. <laughs> I was going to lose my fucking mind. Yeah, well, it's. A... Go ahead. Sorry, <laughs> I don't want to interrupt you guys, but Armin, yeah, you. Uh... You really think of the library as it is a public service. It's it's maybe the last place where people can be together, isn't it? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it's uh, and and you know we have there there's community programming that actually makes people interact with each other in ways that they don't a lot. You know, there's movie theaters where you're supposed to keep your mouth shut, and there's libraries where you're supposed to be quiet. But there's a lot of social. It's actually funny. Most of us here deal with people in some kind of distress or other, except Natasha sits quietly alone and writes about people in distress. Does she use your experience much for her fiction? Because it seems like... You know, she's like really guarded about what she writes. She doesn't always want me to read it. Uh, and I I guess, you know, it's been a long marriage. I, I guess I kind of understand that because I know Natasha pretty pretty much like the back of my hand and it's i can you know, i guess this is in any marriage maybe you've known this a number of times but you can say something and she'll read it completely the opposite direction because it's all tied up with your relationship and how you have dealt with one another and things of the past so i don't think she wants me to be her critic um I, I no. did secretly read the last novel that she wrote, and it was pretty damn good, but I haven't told her that. Yeah, but Natasha has been having trouble writing lately. And yeah. speaking of Natasha, let's cut back to her. Natasha, you're in the car. Uh -huh. Where are you driving? I think I already know where you're driving, but... I have a normal route. I like to go by the Masterson's they leave their windows open and you're privy to a lot for gossip fodder. Um, I always like to go by Ken and Shirley Smith's because they are constantly changing their home. And it is something for us to talk about at book club. And then I make a point to go by the a very post. special lamppost. And Make sure that everything is still in place. As you drive by the lamppost, is it on the corner or in the middle of the street? Um, it's in the middle of the street. It's rather inconspicuous. It's the only real safe haven that I get to the stress of my everyday life. Yeah, it's in sort of a side street. Very quiet. Little traffic, except for sometimes. And... Um, you step out uh, onto the curb. There's a little river of water in the gutter. Um, and you almost can't believe your eyes. You know you put them there three days ago. But in the little basket tied with string onto uh, the post, there's nothing there. Asha inadvertently clutches at her throat a little. And she feels a tightness start to overtake her chest. And why don't you roll uh, against helplessness? I will do that. Night. I will do that. Righty. A 77. I don't think that's... Critical fail. <laughs> yeah, that's, I think, a critical failure. That would be that off is, mind, yeah. That is very bad, Natasha. Yep. And, oh, this is a bad situation. Let's be totally honest. <laughs> and let's be totally honest with that failed unnatural, or sorry, not unnatural, um, helplessness check that you are putting on your character sheet. And let's be totally honest as well that you're panicking. I, I'm rending hair from my scalp at this point. I am doing my oh. best not to cause blood. I am looking around in panic. Maybe they're on the ground. Maybe somebody, if they took them, I can still see them. So maybe five steps that way or maybe five steps. I could go, okay, five steps that way first, and then I'll go to the corner. Um, okay, I could go to the shop. Breathe. You're hyperventilating, but eventually you get a moment to yourself and you realize you need flowers now. I look around frantically, uh, given my history with this, would I know that there's anybody nearby? 
Um, there's a person with a, a bed of roses uh, about two blocks away. Flowers mm. are very common in this area. Yeah, I I run, I take my my heels off and start running. All right, uh, and with that, let's cut back to the house. Evelyn and Richard, you uh, have just returned from your conversation with each other. And maybe a little bit coldly, you walk back into the backyard. <laughs> I don't know. I thought our last conversation was a little more amicable than cold, but sure. Um, Compared to lately, yeah. Well, it's still. Uh, anyways, before we. Did you happen to see my. No, never mind. Sorry, sorry. I no. What? What? what were we lose something? Uh, nothing. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Just this feeling. I guess I don't know. Huh. Okay. Armin, are you? Uh, is Jeremy playing nice? Oh, of course. Uh, actually, I was just. We were just talking about the fact that the four of us all work with people in their. Sort of personal need ways, yeah, often in distress, which I think because I was I I was talking to Jeremy about some of the difficult people that I see at the library, and that you know if we had a psychiatric nurse on hand or on <laughs> staff, it wouldn't be a terrible idea. But of course, the funding being what it is, well, um, you know, Jeremy does deal with people usually on their worst day, and. I deal with people on several of their worst days, I think would be a great kind way to put it. And I know my, uh, I know Richard also, you know, has been at the site of things that are difficult to see or to deal with. Um, yeah, I guess I had never really realized that there's a lot of, uh, a lot of trauma that this group is exposed to on a daily basis right and then natasha is the outlet she puts trauma into the world well i in a, I in a way that people that way well the writing's people, not that bad <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no she she transforms it into trauma that's yeah. fun for people that is actually an outlet so i suppose that's one way of looking at her writings yeah do you um, do you read her stuff I do. Um, it is does not... it scare you? She does sometimes have a really good knack for building suspense. But uh, that is not always what I am looking for in my literature. Um, yeah, she's so always I, had I... a creepy side. Oh, yes, she has. Um, I have. I, I do read them, um, but I read them more because it is something that someone I care about is very interested in rather than out of something I would have gone out of my way to pick up on my own. So you're not, you don't read her between a Peter Straub novel and a Joe Hill novel. Mostly you're reading Sweet Valley High to relax, but then you have to read your sister stuff because you know, she's your I, sister. You know, I mean, I also do pick up, I um, mean, Frank Herbert's great. Uh -huh. um, I do also enjoy, uh, of course, the classic J.R.R. Tolkien. Uh -huh. But yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong with a little flight of fancy of any kind. Um, I just deal with so much on my daily life. Simple stories are sometimes my escape. Absolutely, we 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 can't always just choose to hide from the horrors in the world either, though. It's, it's sometimes these things have to be confronted. This yeah, but you know, I've always thought that uh, I I can always remember my parents saying things like things getting worse and worse. And I've always thought maybe it's just they're getting reported more and more by journalists, and not uh, yeah, not actually you know, getting worse. It's just it's it's an age of clickbait. Everyone's looking to to yeah. draw people. Got to get those numbers right. It's you know Jeremy. on a daily basis I have to deal with some pretty dangerous stuff. But I made a choice a long time ago not to live my life in fear. One of these days, some kid's going to pull a gun on me and blow my head off, and I'm not going to know. Jeremy. Richard, well, you like that? The, the district gives you some counseling services, though, right? Yeah, but, you know, 
you don't always want to do that. Sometimes yeah. you feel the you feel like just accepting the world the way that it is, as violent as it can be, is the only real way to, to go. I, I don't mind. I don't mind if he writes it down. Yeah, yeah, no. Richard, could you do a do a speed roll for me? Okay. <laughs> Sixty-eight is a fail over fifty-five. All right. So you're walking around the backyard, sort of antsy, like a caged tiger, or maybe that's too potent of an example. More like a caged macaw or something. Anyway, you. Uh, I can't hold that in though. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Sorry, poor Richard. <laughs> Uh, so you're walking along the edge of this pool, pacing back and forth, and you hear the sound of a ball rolling towards you. You step on it, on top of it, put all your weight on this ball, and completely fall, launched into the pool. Oh, no, splash. Oh, Jesus, <laughs> Richard. I'm going to run over it. Does Richard know how to swim? I am also going to run over, and uh, that is an excellent question. Uh, does my partner know how to swim? If you Richard, do, you know how to swim. <laughs> I am looking here. I don't see it on the skills that matter. It, it's really? a party pool. It's only three foot deep anyway. <laughs> <laughs> if I don't know that, I'm still panicked up. <laughs> well, I'll reach down with my big muscly arm and help pull him out. All right. You okay? Yeah, yeah. Get your oh. head. No, just just surprised the hell out of me. Thank you for the save. That uh, it really wasn't that deep, was it? Let me go get a towel. And, uh, oh. Richard, that soccer ball is nowhere to be seen. Honey, are you all right? What happened? I tripped on a, a soccer ball. I think I. He glances, takes a look at uh, Jeremy and uh, Natasha, and then around the yard. I I don't see it, but I'm 100 percent sure. I I stepped on a ball, and it slid out from under my foot, and I went in the pool. You guys oh, did not see anything of that nature. I'll, I mean, I'll was... toss him a big orange bait beach towel. Try stuff off. I mean, yeah. there was nothing there. Are you okay? Yeah, yeah, I, you know, uh, my phone, my wallet. Okay, G give me a second. Yeah, everything is okay. Don't, don't worry. Give me, give me some space. Okay. All right, uh, and I'll stand up and, um, oh, hun, give me your phone. I'll get it in some rice. And we'll try and dry it out. It's a mess. <laughs> Thanks, Armin. And he'll pass over. <laughs> is is Richard about my size? Um, Richard is probably a little bit smaller than you. Okay. Well, that's okay. I'm going to go in and see if I've got like a pair of shorts and a t-shirt or something. I can sure. give it to um, you. Jeremy, uh, actually, before we get to you, let's, let's cut back to Natasha. You're panicking. You're walking, power walking. Your peels are in your hand, clicking back and forth like Newton's cradle as you walk, power walk towards this flower bed. You see the roses, the TV is on in the living room. Someone's watching it. Uh, nah, I don't know if I can get these without getting caught. I try and sneak in as carefully as I can to get just even one, even just one, I'll, I'll do anything. Do a speed roll. And uh, remember, if you have any relevant skills, you can just, uh, look at those if okay there are any there might not be yeah i'm with you let's take a a gander a 50, for speed, no. you can argue for them like for example like dodge or something you could argue yeah. for that no i got a 59 that's a failure not great um so you walk up to the flower bed and you realize that uh, there's no way you're going to get up to this place without getting caught. Okay. I'm just biting my nails like, God, I, 
Um, I pull out my phone. Okay. And I'm, I just Googled uh, flower shops near me or, or, or flower delivery or no, 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 flower shop, flower shops, flower shops. Let's start flower with flower shops. shops. Flower shops near you. There's one 10 minutes away. Okay. Walking or running or driving? Driving. Oh, Jesus. I look around for a cab. There's no one. This is sweet as deserted. All right. I <laughs> hightail it back to my car. <laughs> All right. You're running back to your car. Um, and you get in and you start it up and you're driving, you're driving to the nearest flower shop. Um, and I'm going to drive as fast as I safely can. I'll, I'll, I'll roll for that if you want, but I'm, I'm like, I'm breaking the law. Okay. So, uh, yeah, roll, uh, roll a speed. You're trying 29. To so speed I would pass, but not my driving skill. All right. So you, uh, are able to. Yeah get there in five minutes okay the you walk into the door the bell clings the lady's at the desk she says hi can i help you i yes yes <clears throat> and i smooth my blouse my name is natasha rowley and i am looking to purchase a small set of your finest i believe lilies is everything okay? You you look a little bit disheveled, ma'am. Yes, everything is fine. I appreciate your concern. I forgot my coffee and I had to run. It was busy. I had a busy morning. It was a busy day. Do you have Do you have any lilies? Um. Yeah. What kind of lilies do you want? Any kind. Any kind. Any kind any... that are lilies. Well, we have like we have the the pink Kaya ones. lilies. Okay. Uh, and she goes into the back. And I'm scrounging money if I have anything on me. Do I only have my card or do I have money in my purse? Uh, you have money. Okay. You have some cash. I, I just get like $20 in my hand ready to go. Okay. Um, and <clears throat> she walks out to the desk, hands the flowers to you, kind of sheepishly takes the money. Sort Thank of, you so much. You see her sort of look at it. And when she realizes you're not shortchanging her, mm -hmm. she says, have a nice day. I hope those lilies uh, satisfy they're going, you. They're, they're going to make everything better. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, and I run out the door. Jeremy, <laughs> Jeremy, you're going back up to your room and... Uh, you go back into the kitchen. The stairs are right next to the kitchen, right where that photo was that uh, Evelyn was looking at. And as you're walking towards the stairs, you hear a boom, 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 boom. And then, bam, a soccer ball hits the wall and gently comes to rest. Yeah, the thanks, of the our neighbor kids. Uh, it comes from the outside of the house? Inside. It comes down the stairs. What the fuck? Soccer. Uh, honey? Oh, she's not here. Fuck. Um, I, I, I'm just going to run upstairs and uh, get uh, get a pair of shorts. And um, I probably look to see if I've got shorts that I don't want anymore. Or Yeah. You find uh, a pair of gym shorts. That Neon you, yellow. Yeah. Yeah. They're really ugly. You got them for free at some like, like Gold's Gym for three year membership or whatever. Yeah. And you take them down. And, a shirt. Uh, and you see there's a room across that's like a storage room, and the door is open. Okay, Store, but, our storage storage room. Um, I go over to the storage room and look inside, and I go, "Hello." There's no one there, um, but there's a bed there. It's a storage room. It's kind of a weird place to put a bed. I guess if you're storing it, but you don't remember it being there. You think you would remember putting that there, or actually, it's not your house, but <laughs> you think that you would remember I, I it being there. 
we've screwed up on whose house it is. Yeah. It's <laughs> an awkward back and forth. It's we all live together. No, it's Schrodinger's <laughs> it's house now. House. Yeah, Schrodinger's house. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm going to look at it and think that's odd, but I'm I'm still going to turn around and head out of the kitchen, yeah. back into the backyard. Yeah. Uh, after um, I went up stairs in his house and took clothes out of his drawer. <laughs> Wait a second. Shit, I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well. <laughs> You know what? Should, should we pause whatever. and determine whose house we're at? It is the Ockley's house. Okay, okay. It the okay. it's the Ockley's house. house. So all of that was just a, a fantasy. Of, uh, a fever dream. Oh, no. Well, I, I still got, got the pants. Okay, let's just say you still <laughs> I got, got my own pants. clothes to get here. I don't need to wear his clothes if we're at our home. Problem solved. I just Richard said, run doors. upstairs and grab a pair of <laughs> shorts off the back of my door. I don't want to get the house wet. And I can't strip down naked in the yard. Right. There yeah, you go. Just that, yeah. We're that close. Yes. Yeah. I mean, why not? They're I, they're hanging on the back of the door. Just reach in the bedroom yeah. and you can grab them. Right. right. They're right there. All right. All right. And uh, the thing that as you go back down, the thing that strikes you most about that bed was that it was a race car bed. Seems a little childish for adults to have yeah especially adults without children but you yeah. deliver the shorts to richard you go richard put these on thanks um, jeremy keep some distance uh, from the pool from now on yeah oh and, what's bugging you jeremy uh, nothing really i mean uh you and uh you and evelyn haven't had kids uh i just happened to notice the uh the uh race car bed was it yours when you were a kid what yeah the race car bed in your storage room okay hold on a second i'll be right back i i evelyn uh maybe we should talk inside uh yeah um you're your soccer ball almost hit me too. It came. Yeah, we're getting really kid oriented, aren't we? I'm I'm uh, sorry if I said something oh, wrong. No, 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 no problem, Jeremy. Don't 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 worry. Uh, I look at Evelyn. and I give her kind of a wide eyed. I, I have um, no idea what you're talking about, Jeremy. Um, Richard, what what is going on? There, there's a, a child's bed. Is it? Is there a crib? What? Pause, Jeremy. There's. We don't have a storage room. Where did you see this? At the bottom of the stairs. The the door that's there. It was open. The, you mean you mean the side of the stairs where the photographs are? Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, top of the stairs. Top of the stairs. Top sorry. of the stairs. Sorry. Um, in my, uh, since I live here, um, <laughs> is there a room where he is saying there is a room? Yeah, there's a room there. It's a storage okay. room. What? Okay. I'm getting to the bottom of this right now. Yeah. Well, I mean, not without me. I, well, Jeremy, we... come with us. Um, I look over at Armin and I'm like, Armin, how are you reacting to this situation? What the hell is going on here? I, uh, you know, obviously, I anticipated being a little bit of a fifth wheel here, but I didn't expect that I was going to see a general breakdown of at least one marriage or three <laughs> people. Um, I'm, you know, I'm going to, I, and nobody seemed, like when I got here, it didn't seem like anybody had been like pre-gaming, drinking rum all afternoon or anything, right? Everyone seemed pretty much on the ball when I got here. I'm not drunk. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Uh, I might know, be. I might be soon. I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna follow them to the house as far as the fridge and take another one of these Belgian ales, and I'm gonna go and sit by the pool and look around for a soccer ball. Because if he's yeah. not drunk, what the hell did he trip on and fall in his own damn pool? Yeah. Well, and, there um, was soccer ball inside. 
I didn't announce that I was looking for a soccer ball. Oh, pool, okay, sorry. <laughs> I'm telling you what I'm thinking. And you're feeling a little bit more awkward since the only person you really know, Natasha, seems to have run off somewhere. And she's I mean, I been... was going to ask about how far it, she had to go to get steaks, but I thought not a good time for questions with this tense crowd. So, yeah. She should have been back by now, and you've also forgot the dogs and the burgers, and um, maybe our mom oh. will take care of those. Right. Oh, so the grill is now, like, smoking. Yeah, this barbecue <laughs> seems to have gone off the rails. On, on my way back to the pool with my new beer, I noticed the grill smoking, and I'm like, oh, yeah, we've got, we've made more charcoal. I'm like peeling off the charred meats yeah um <clears throat> so <Damn> neighbor kids <laughs> you're looking around for the soccer ball and the three of us have stormed upstairs the three of you have stormed upstairs and you sort of look around the edge of the pool there's a sort of flower bed more verdant area in a strip behind a layer of bricks and um, you look behind that, you're trying to find something. You don't find anything, mm -hmm. but what you do hear is the sound of a car pull up oh. and someone after a few seconds rings the doorbell. Oh, I was hoping it was Natasha back. Uh, so is there like a, a wooden fence to the driveway that I can go to the front? Yeah, so, you could go around front from the backyard. Yeah, I'll go and see if I can intercept a guest or delivery or whatever. Yeah. And uh, you see a white van parked outside um, with a weird logo on it. <clears throat> Um, it says N A S C U L T uh, U I U, and then there's uh, what looks to be some sort of American seal, an eagle, um, and there's a guy knocking on the door. In yeah, that's correct. In a suit. Uh, hi. Um, I'm I'm I don't live here. I'm just a guest. Can I help you? Um, and, uh, he, he looks at you and says, oh, hello there. Um, what's your name, sir? Uh, hi, I'm Armin, a guest here. Armin Mafian. <laughs> uh, I'm, I, you know, I, who are you? What can I help you with? Um, we're, or the Royal We. He uses the royal we. We're part of an investigation um, concerning some activities that have taken place uh, at this residence. We need to talk to uh, Natasha Rao. Natasha is out right now. Um, are you, I don't, what agency are you with? It's not really business hours. Like, why are you here? Uh, again, we need to speak to Natasha Rao. Well, why don't you give me a card and I'll give it to her when she gets back? Because, you know, I don't know you from Adam. Mm -hmm. uh, do you know where Natasha Rao might be? She ran out to pick something up. All right, thank you. Do you have a card? I'd really be interested in seeing a card from your organization. He hands you a badge um you don't recognize this as a branch of the government that you've ever heard of it says uh national society for the occult unusual incidents unit and then has a picture of him hmm. and it uh yeah so that van is full of tv equipment and this is some kind of prank show I I think you should I'll I'll give this card to Natasha. 
Uh, well, since you said she's just out getting something, I, I think I might as well just wait here for her. And he walks past you back into his van. And yeah, I assume he took the badge from. I took. I assume he took the badge back. Yeah, he took the badge back. National occult something. Okay, I'm gonna go to the backyard and phone Natasha because this is creepy. All right, Natasha, you've gotten the flowers. You're heading back to the lamppost and you arrive. Oh, you needed. Thank you. I step out and uh, again, as composed as possible, gather my flowers, step over to the lamppost and very nonchalant place them inside the holder. Yeah. And as you place them inside the holder, they wither into crepey paper, almost as if they uh, dried in front of your eyes. They Is that an unnatural? Apart. Yeah, that's a rank two unnatural check. So, oh, sorry. <laughs> so the ranks of the hardened things are if you have a hard, the, the unnatural checks have different ranks, right? So if you uh, have a certain amount of hardened checks, you don't have to take unnatural checks under that amount. Sorry, I completely, I don't know why I, I just forgot this completely, but that's, that's what they're for. So if you have, for example, two unnatural hardened notches, you don't have to take a rank two unnatural check. Okay, but I only have one. Natasha, you only have one, mm -hmm. so you do have to take this rank two unnatural check. Okay. Which means I need to roll... Mind. Yeah, that's not good. I rolled an 81. I'm pretty sure I failed. Oof. All right, so... 70, yeah. well read is my mind. Yeah, dang. Mm. Natasha, yep. the... the, the panic that sort of dwindled when you bought the flowers is back. What are you going to do? You need to check on Jeremy to make sure, you know. Uh, sure. I can only imagine <laughs> what my character is doing, because as a player, I am having a bit of a meltdown on uh, what I would prioritize first. So um, I think that's probably true. I need to get back and see Jeremy and in the worst case scenario, I can get my hands on him and just make sure at that point that, you know, um, th things remain nominal. And then I will, uh, I will address it from there. Seems like a sound plan. Good job, Natasha drive. Drive. Uh, and you on the way back, get a call from Armin. You're driving back. Hello. Uh, uh, Natasha, um, I don't know, uh, you've been gone a while, so there's a guy in a white van who came to talk to you, and he's from some bullshit federal occult investigation What? thing. What? So I'm, yeah, I don't know. I mean, he showed me a card. I didn't, I, I, I don't know. Um, but he kind of spooked me. Um, he said that there, you know, he had to come to an investigate an event at the at, at the Ockley House. So I'm maybe you just want to, I don't know. Do you want to come meet me? Or uh, yeah, I don't know if he's going to follow me if I get in my car. But <laughs> I mean, I said you were out, uh, and then he pressed me, and I said you were out to get something. He wouldn't identify himself at first. I. I didn't know what to say. Oh my God. You did the right thing, Armin. I don't know what to do. I, don't I mean, do. I can, I can, I can get in my car and go and buy another six pack. And if he follows me, then I can call you and say it's safe to go back there. That's a good idea. You're so smart. Thank you so much. Look, I, I have a problem I need to talk to you about. Okay. I don't, I don't want to complicate things, but suffice it to say that some things are going on that are a little outside of the norm for what we discussed. And it's possible that the ritual has been fucked up. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, well, I, I'm going to, I'll just, I'll just tell the people inside 
Do you know if the Ockleys have a kid's bed upstairs? It's been it's been a weird evening. I don't know if I should have come by. I'm gonna I'm just gonna call upstairs and tell them that I'm gonna head out and then I'll and then I'll tell you if he follows. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. Be safe, Armin. I'm sure it's fine. So All yeah, right, so I'm I'm just gonna sort of go into the kitchen and literally holler upstairs. Assuming that there will be an earshot, but it's probably we should find out what they've been up to. Um, okay. Well, thank you. With that, we shall cut back to Richard and Evelyn and Jeremy. To um, the world's healthiest relationship heads up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> to just a uh, Panglossian best of all worlds relationship. <laughs> and what are you discussing, Richard? You're is going the room, like, is, do the bed there? Yeah. You're going into the room, you open it up, there's a child's bed. There, see. Race car oh. bed. Do we hmm. see this? You see it. Everybody sees it. What wow. the that is, fuck? That is not what I was expecting. Would you say that um you were expecting, Evelyn? I wouldn't say that I was expecting you to deny the fact that there's a bed in your upstairs bedroom. Well, I've I've I'm pretty sure I've never seen this before, but 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 I'd, I also I'd love to know it. Have never seen this before. Is there? Uh, uh, okay, I have. I was about can, to, I, I was... <laughs> can I use an ability to ferret out the truth? Absolutely, it is on my character sheet here. It says your ferret out truth skill will allow you to not only tell when someone is lying, but possibly even use verbal trickery to get them to admit something they're trying to hide. So Absolutely, I want to use that to see if Evelyn knows about this. And uh, Evelyn, I would say you can uh, also roll on mind. Uh, on notice. Ooh. Uh, yeah, that's not good. Um, right, what about you, Richard? I got a 32, which is a success on mine. Oh, he whipped the shit out of my roll. I got a 78. <laughs> All right. So you're ferreting out the truth and... What exactly is the truth you want to ferret out? Um, if if she knows about this and and if she's trying to hide a certain truth from me, so that's that two I, questions. Okay, sorry. I guess yes. Is that <laughs> what, I, what they're kind of connected? They're kind of the same thing. Is that if she does know about these, then question two is a yes as well. So, um, you're a journalist. You're you're a specializer in whiffing bullshit. And um, Evelyn is genuinely, she does genuinely seem surprised about uh, the bed. In terms of the other conversation you've been having with her, though, she is definitely concealing something. If, if I sense any, like, escalating tension... Oh, I'm you sense to... a lot of escalating yeah, tension. Times higher than what's already been like. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I kind of inside. I'm saying, I wish I didn't say anything, and I'm gonna slink back down the stairs as yeah. I see Armin come in and say he's okay. gonna go get if, some beer. It's okay, Jeremy. <laughs> you're, you're practically family here, is that they're just having a little trouble. I, oh boy, it's um, okay, yeah. I'm still gonna slink away. So, I just don't feel comfortable around all of so this. So, Richard has weaseled out some kind of intuition that I'm keeping a secret. Is that? Is that the result of that check? Yeah, he's he's weaseled out. Um, I don't think he's we weaseled too much. Yeah, I don't uh, know. But he's de he definitely knows something's what he up. knows. Yeah, right. he knows something's up. He's got some very particular details crossed and mixed up. But <laughs> you, Richard, you you you're becoming suspicious about about Evelyn's f fidelity to you. Yeah, I mean, a little bit suspicious. Why would she try to hide it from you? Yeah, well, I thought we should be celebrating, right? It doesn't yeah. make sense, but yeah. But you are know? you saying that out loud? Sorry, Richard. Ah, uh, no, I'm not. I, okay. I I started to go down that earlier. And now, now he's just kind of casting awkward glances and then looking away. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, I... Jeremy, sorry, 
is it is it obvious that while he may have some hint as to what's go- what might be going on the bed is is new to me as well are are you saying is it obvious to richard yes yeah no he he knows that you are not aware of the bed it okay just a surprise i just wanted to establish that sorry yep, yes. yep. so no. um so there's a surprise bed in our house um yeah but richard you want to tell me what's going on i can't explain that i um i, f- I figured you know more in that department of uh what we could be expecting but um okay um so you didn't order the bed and i didn't order no. the bed uh, jeremy i think said the soccer ball is inside now i slept on a soccer ball outside is there a ball in this room no okay i don't I, i'm a guessing you didn't buy a soccer ball no i would guess that it would probably be years before a baby would be old enough to kick a soccer ball around okay so we've tripped over this topic several times already in the last hour so i'm just going out to come out and say it i'm guessing you found the positive pregnancy test yes okay i did as a matter of fact the reason i didn't tell you immediately is because we are on rocky ground as it is I didn't want to add extra stress to the situation by adding a child to it. That doesn't I mean... should say the fact that you invite the... He's just down there in the kitchen. Who's down there in the kitchen? Well, I'd have to guess at this point, it's not mine. Are... Oh. That's a very big accusation you just leveled at me, Richard. Well... Jesus, he everywhere we go now, he used to be four of us, and now suddenly he just keeps showing up. Okay, look. Um it's, listen, listen. If if this if this Armin guy is offering something that I, I can't provide, then uh fine. Like Okay. Uh <laughs> I'm back. Um Oh, no, 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 no. Well, I no. mean, he, he's, okay. he's clearly into intellectual. You, you, he you and I knows were a lot same, of. You and I were on the same page. Armin's kind of a goober. Like he's a sweet what? man, but like not, not like that. Richard, what the hell? I just, I just thought all the signs were there, and the, everything just kept pointing to that. I. Oh my god! Okay, whoo! All right. So we're we're okay then. I, yeah. Yes. Oh, oh I could strangle you, you stupid man. <laughs> okay. So I didn't mean that. I'm sorry. There's been a lot of lot of stress. <laughs> I, I I I was sorry. I totally thought that you were cheating on me with with with. You with that Armin fellow i uh i'm sorry there's there's a lot of things that i've been reading wrong and i just totally thought that um okay wow. oh i can physically feel my blood pressure dropping richard <laughs> genius okay oh, God. what wow. okay oh bed Gosh. why is there a okay. bed in the house uh, g- g- good good question you know what i is there, is there you... a is there a gas can... leak? Because like earlier with the photo, there was like something going on, and like remember I dragged you in, no, and like I... it was the normal photo. I I changed the furnace filter. I we're we're good. Like everything should be fine. I. So okay, something's going. You tripped over a ball. We've got a strange bed in the house, and I'm seeing things in photos. I am not losing it. I know enough to know that. Um, okay. I mean, you're around enough patients that I, I'm, I'm sure you recognize the signs. If uh... I was, I was going to say, Richard, schizophrenia is not contagious, man. 
<laughs> um all right hey, okay hey. She she I, literally like has her hands on your shoulder and is just doing the like I just ran yeah. up a flight of stairs like heavy breathing. <laughs> um sorry, not she, I. Um yeah, yeah. Okay. She stands oh. up and does the yeah. whole like oh. all right. We clearly have a lot to talk about, but I don't think that this precise day is the correct time. And I know that there's a lot that we have been kicking down the road. Yeah. But yeah, there's a there's a lot of weirdness happening today, and I just want to make it to after the barbecue. If we can make it after the barbecue, we can start tackling these hurdles one at a time. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. no. And with that, um, let's cut back to Armin. You just see Jeremy walk right by you. He grabs a beer. Walks yeah. out in the back stairs. Jeremy passes me in the kitchen and I follow him back out and say, um, uh, there's some guy out. I don't know if you, geez, you're a cop. So some, um, there's some bullshit authority figure waiting in a vehicle in front. Never mind. Sorry, let's start again. I let the burgers and the hot dogs burn, and I'm and Natasha's been a minute. I'm gonna run and just get. I've been kind of off meat anyway. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna go pick something up. I'll be back in ten. Just tell them I'll be right back. And yeah, whatever, and that, that was good beer. If you could find that same stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. I'll get some more of that. It seems like kind of a tense night, so maybe I'll yeah, I'll get a couple more sixes. I'll see. You see you soon yeah and what is what is jeremy thinking right now you're staring into the pool well, i'm i'm looking down into the water and my mind is sort of off and i'm thinking okay it's coming i uh, he's probably going to break my jaw and i should probably let him mm -hmm. um and maybe then it'll all be over with and we can settle things up um where the fuck is my wife and i'll pull out my phone then. and i'll i'll you know i realize jesus christ it's been like an hour or has it been about an hour yeah um but she, so i'm gonna i'm gonna text her and i'm just gonna say honey is everything okay you've been gone for an hour Oh, actually, yeah, I, I, I apologize. I did also want to do something similar, but I guess it's a bit late. We're dealing yeah, with we'll, something else. <laughs> we'll, we'll get back to you. We'll, we'll get back to you soon. Um, so, Natasha, you're speeding, um, but you're now stopped because you just got this call from Armin. You're basically flashbanged with information right now, and you get a text from your husband. You're muted. <laughs> You're muted. <laughs> Thank He's you. I open it, it immediately. It's the love of my life. Yeah. He's still here. Oh, my God. What does it say? What does it say? Um, where are you, baby? It's been over an hour. Um, is everything okay? Is the car broke te down? Text him back. Leading emoji. <laughs> I text him back. Everything's fine comma i'll be back soon comma just wanted to let you know how much i love you period send all right heart double heart triple heart purple heart and jeremy maybe you're feeling a little better now now that you know that everything's gonna sort of clear the air come clean and Maybe you can go back and start fresh with Natasha. Yeah, that's that's the plan. Yeah, and as you sort of look up from your phone, you feel a sense of maybe peace. And through a gap in the fence, 
a board that sort of got half pulled down and then the other half is still up. You can see a child in a soccer uniform out on the street. He's just standing still and he's facing away from you. He's holding a Disneyland balloon. He's holding a Disneyland balloon. Um, he's on your lawn or on uh, the Ockley's lawn. Ockley's lawn. Um, I'll sort of walk over to the, you, there's a missing board in the fence. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just sort of walk over there and I think, i uh, looking for your soccer ball. I think it's here somewhere. And he slowly begins walking backwards towards you. Very slowly, almost in slow motion. You okay, kid? He's coming towards you, starting to speed up, speed up, speed up, speed up, speed up. And then a man in a black suit comes right in between the fence bars and says, uh, excuse me, sir, are you, are you Mr. Rao? Oh, yeah, who the fuck are you? Um. <clears throat> My name's not really important, um, but if you must know, uh, I'm Christian Newley uh, of the Unusual Incidents Unit, and I was wondering if uh, Natasha Rao was here. I need to speak with her. Natasha's my wife. She went to the store. Uh, you're with who? Look, I'm a uh, cop. Tell me what you tell me what the truth. Well, actually, you're not. Um, but that's neither here nor there. I mean. This is hard to explain. I, I think we really need to talk. Talk. Where'd the kid go? Yeah. The kid? Yeah, there was a kid right there. Soccer kid. Oh, he's dead. Um, but he'll be back soon. If everything goes to plan. Armin said there was a crackpot out front. Are you some sort of what? What are you selling something? I don't. I don't have time for this. And he takes out uh, a ballpoint pen, unscrews the tip, and there's a long spring inside. It looks pretty stiff, though. It's not springy. Um, and he takes his glasses down, opens his eyeball, and he sticks the spring underneath his eye and starts corkscrewing it in. He's screaming and bleeding down the side of his cheek. And he goes, ah! And then he looks at you. And all the bones underneath the knee of your right leg disappear. And it turns to jelly. You fall onto the ground and he you're in immense pain. Okay, so I, there's pain. Yeah. yeah, immense pain. I mean, ah, you need your bones. <laughs> yeah. I was ah, about what? to say, is there screaming? Yeah, yeah they're screaming. screaming. Well, it's and, manly uh, screaming. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> lower, lower register <laughs> screaming. Ouch! Yowzer! <laughs> Motherfucker, what the fuck? There's Batman style screaming going on right now. And with that, okay. let's cut back to Armin. What are you doing, Armin? You've gone out to the store, but it looks like whoever has not followed you. Yeah, I basically I made uh, arbitrary left and right turns to make sure that there wasn't any white van. And as soon as I'm five blocks away, I pull over and, and call Natasha and say, uh, he didn't follow me, so I can meet you, uh, or you can, but he's at the house. I don't know if you want to go back to the house. I don't know. I mean, he had a card. I, it was like I, the National Occult Investigation something, and he knew that something happened at the house. Armin, it's fine. I'm almost back home. I think you should, I think you should meet me there. I, I have a bad feeling about this. Um, be back at the barbecue? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm almost there. I'm maybe a th five blocks away. 
Oh, all right. I'm not much farther away. I, I'm okay. gonna I'm gonna get a little more beer because frankly, everyone needs gonna need some beer. I'll you might want to grab a bag of beef jerky because I didn't get steaks. I'll explain when I see you. Right. Okay. I'll all right. Got it. Be careful. All right. And seeing with Armin, you uh are going to Ralph's. You pull in the parking lot. Um you go in the store. There's not really anybody around. It's kind of an odd hour. This isn't a very big or popular Ralph's. There's only like maybe 10 people inside. And you go, what are you getting? Um, package of hot dog, package of patties, a uh, couple of pieces of steak. I'm not looking at anything very closely. I'm sort of grabbing stuff. Um, yeah. This is This is California. Right. This is this is Washington, Seattle, Washington. This is Seattle. All right. Uh, California equivalent. Yeah, All right. West Coast because we didn't have yeah. else. Um, I assume there's liquor in the grocery store. Yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna get another six pack of the Belgian double, and I'm gonna get like a fifth of bourbon because things are. People need sedation at that household, as far as I can tell. And it's just like grab, grab, throw, push, like yeah. knock the little ladies out of the way. Because I kind of am anxious, also kind of interested to see what the hell's going on. Yeah, and right. you pick up a package of Belgian pale ale. It has a little artichoke on it. No, that's not artichoke. It's hops. Ha, ha, ha. Um, sorry. That was crazy, <laughs> but uh, yeah, you go to the self checkout um, and you scan it, and the steak isn't scanning. It goes, and then you realize I'm at the self checkout, but I need to go to the regular checkout to buy liquor. You cancel the transaction, pick up all your stuff, go to the regular checkout, the one that's open, and the lady lets you go through her name tag has a little thing that says, I heart my boss. She does not look like she hearts her boss. <laughs> and, uh, anyway, she scans you through, you get your receipt. And you leave a, into the yeah. Sorry. I leave a buck at the end of the register. Cause I feel like everybody's having a very bad day. You uh, have just exited the Ralphs and parking lot's empty, it's dusk. You uh, look out, oh, you're muted. So yes, it's, you said something. It, it's, it's dusk. I left the poor girl a dollar because that looks like hell in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and like... while you're walking to your car, what kind of car do you drive, Armin? Uh, you know, not surprisingly, it's kind of a beater. It's, uh, you know, it's like a Toyota from the 90s that's still alive, but. Yeah. So you walk over to your 1997 uh, Toyota Corolla, a nice shade of uh, brown that they don't make them like that anymore. Uh, I guess brown is just not appealing to the eye anymore, but you love it. It's a good car. So it's, been through a, it's been through a lot. It's been through a lot. And um, she's still rolling. Yep. And uh, and I call it caramel, by the way. Just, you know, <laughs> not to me, it's not brown, it's caramel. Well, excuse me uh, for the indiscretion, but you walk over to your caramel 1997 Toyota Corolla and Uh, there appears to have been a basket, um, and Natasha, would you say you've taken Armin to the basket on your uh, lamppost? Yeah. If he would have gone with me, I would say that I would have probably even asked his opinion on the location. Yeah. And Armin you recognize that you know that basket it, it looks eerily similar it, it looks almost spitting image of uh natasha's basket 
Right. And I drove by it earlier and there weren't any flowers. Are there flowers in it in the basket on the car? No. Okay. I'm. Um, and it looks identical. It looks identical. Okay. I'm going to uh, get in the car. Where is it mounted on the? It's a little bit below chest height. Um, on the lamppost, it's mounted on the lamppost. Uh, oh, it's on the lamppost. In yes, the parking it's not lot. on your car. It, it's I'm... on a lamppost that's uh, maybe about 30 feet off. Right. Jesus. Um, so I'm thinking about uh, it, as a ritual, I guess I don't want to just, I, I'm going to, um, is, is, does this Ralph's have, uh, flowers on the outside for grab and go for forgetful yep. husbands kind of stuff? Yeah. Right. So I'm going to spin around in the car throw five bucks, grab some lilies, two bunches, I guess 10 bucks. I'm going to grab two bunches. I'm going to put one in the basket on the lamppost. I'm going to drive to Natasha's lamppost. Yeah. You expect to make sure checkout, that's okay. You expect the checkout lady to say like back so soon, but she just stares at you. Yeah. You get uh, a really tacky set of roses with happy anniversary tag on them and uh, a nice sort of mixed bag bouquet. Um, okay. That right. Looks That's good. Classy. Right. Maybe inclusive is good. Cause I don't know exactly what I didn't remember what was on the back of that. Uh, yeah. Sheet. So yeah. So I'll, I take two, Put one of the one in the parking lot and then drive to the one that I know Natasha should be maintaining. Except for when you put the one in the one in the parking lot, they turn almost to paper instantly. They brown, start to wither away, and the petals fall off dried to the floor. Okay. So that's so an irrational unnatural roll? And that's a rank two unnatural. Oh, seventeen. I'm honky dory. My mind is fully comfortable with that. Well, I mean, actually, it's 78 is far from my score of 70, so it's not great, but interesting. Um, um actually, and my occultism is 40, so I guess I get a I do benefit from rolling under that, yes. Uh, so only if you're rolling that skill, so not on a on, not on a sanity. Oh, right, not on a not on a madness thing. Of course, right. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so that's weird, but you're going to Natasha's post. Yeah, I mean, maybe if I can, if the one in the parking lot didn't work, maybe the her her main one will work. I feel like the ritual. It feel it feels like a ritual is being undone, right? I was. Yeah. I went to the barbecue because I was worried about her maintaining the ritual, and now I've got more. I. Do you want to roll your occultism? Sure. Now that's a sixty-nine. So. Nice. So it's good for mind, but it's not good for occultism. Uh, okay. So, <clears throat> with a success on mind. I would say that, yeah, you're, you are you already got it square on the face. It looks like the ritual is being undone. So mm -hmm. it, this is I, definitely not right. And I don't have a copy of it. I gave it to her not taking it seriously. Yeah. So I need to see, like, if I'm going to blood the law, I have to find it. Okay. And she's going back there. So like, if, is, it, is it out of the way to go by her lamppost on the way to the Ockley house? No. It's uh, it's on your way. Yeah. So I'll I'll, that will be my first stop. All right. Um, just to see if I can just to gain more information about the situation. I don't know that I don't know if she knows that it's off. All right. And with that, speaking of Natasha, let's go back to Natasha. You're heading back to the house, correct? Yeah. 
Your music. Natasha? Yes, but mm, I just realized something. Ah, God, yes, I need to go back. I need to go back. I need to talk to Jeremy. That's the most important thing right now. <clears throat> yeah, and you realize he's still there. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're so, going back. You so yeah, pull, frantically driving. You pull up to the house. Okay, and I scramble then, out the door. Yeah, you see that. Uh, do can a, you hear me screaming from the backyard? <laughs> she can she hear me screaming. Right. Yeah, you can. You can. You can definitely hear Jeremy is yelling, and there appears to be a guy who is bleeding in the front yard. Uh okay. I run to Jeremy's aid. Um, at this point, Richard and Evelyn, uh, you have sort of run down the stairs, run out, and you see Jeremy looks like he has Evelyn. It's looks like the most fucked up leg you've ever seen in your life. My leg, my leg. Holy shit. Evelyn, Holy shit. Evelyn, there's Jeremy, a crazy the fucking weirdo. There's a crazy um, man. He did something uh, to me. Can I make a, uh, um, uh, can I, like a medicine roll to find out what the hell's going on? Um, <clears throat> one second, let me look at your sheet. Or am uh, I not so, phrasing that? Am I thinking of this wrong? You'd have so, to have some sort of first aid, or right? Yeah, you have you have a medicine of of thirty, so you can roll that, of course. Sure. Um. I got a oh, I, like... I snaked in, so I got a twenty-seven. So that is both mind and medicine. All right. So uh, you're trying to help Richard. Yes. All right. So you quickly realize that all of the bones below Richard's knee, or sorry, not Richard, Jeremy's knee, um, have disappeared. They are no longer there. They're gone, and that is going to be a rank three unnatural check. How about for me? Oh. Yeah, you're gonna have to make that too. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, so uh, just for clarity, what am I trying to roll under? Mind. Mind. Got it. And Richard, if you're walking out and seeing this, everybody who's walking yep. out and seeing this, making a natural check. So I got a thirty-nine. Okay. I got a <gasps> ten. I passed. Nineteen. Nice. Pardoned. I passed. Um, I rolled a twenty-six. Should I be evil, Natasha? Yes, please. I'm going to make you take a disadvantage because of your obsession. Totally fair. Uh, 46, I think, still makes it. All right. So you are just glad that Richard, I mean, Richard, Jeremy is there. He's there. He's still there. Oh, yeah. 911. <laughs> um, like, oh, God, it'll be okay, hon. Just, just, uh, 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 oh, God. So with the tough Evelyn, end, or with a rank three, what does that mean for, like, it, is there any difference to the roll? Okay. No difference. It's just if you have three hardened um, checks, you don't have to roll, but you don't. You Got it. I would be shocked if you did. Richard presumably has a cell phone. He's going to try to call 911. All right. Um, oh, except he soaked his. Never mind. Yeah, yours is not on your person. <laughs> Yeah. I'm oh, like yeah. Richard. Oh, I see him pull out his. Richard. I'm scrambling He's for his gone. phone. Yeah, <laughs> I pull my phone out and just throw it at him. Okay. I'm okay. like, yeah. All right. Uh, so Natasha, as you uh, pull your phone out and toss it to Richard, do a speed check. Let's do that. Uh, a thirteen. Yay! That's a success. Yeah. Oh, we're on a good streak now. So the phone escapes your grasp and heads towards Richard as the bleeding man grabs your arm. He was trying to stop you, but it's too late. I'm like, get off me! Can I and can I punch that guy in the face? Absolutely. absolutely. I am very well read. I have read every one of Bruce Lee's books. Crazy man, I am crazy man. Better at self-defense than I am driving. Yeah. He's bleeding out of his eye horribly, so... Uh, like, let go of me! Go ahead and roll a body for me. 53, I don't think that makes it. Um, it does not. Gosh, dog it. Okay, so you sort of weakly uh, slap him, and he pulls out a uh, silenced pistol and says, oh I, Now, God. I think that we've gotten off on the wrong foot, everybody. Is he within 
like is he facing Natasha? Am I behind him? What's the situation? I would say you're kneeling down by uh, Jeremy. Cool. So I'm in theory below his eye his eye line. Yeah, you're definitely below. And remember, there's the fence between Jeremy and Richard. Natasha has opened the gate in the fence and gone inside, but th- oh. he's still on the other side of the fence. Okay, okay. So there's no. I don't have. I sorry. For some reason, I thought he was directly next to me. My apologies. I screamed um, Natasha, and I'm trying to crawl. <laughs> yes, to, to protect. Oh. Her. Um. Uh, hang on. I have a question that I need to get the fuck away from my wife, Jeremy. He walks into the back with the pistol out and sort of points it in all of y'all's general direction and says, listen, we need to talk about what she did. And he points to Natasha. We need to talk about what you did. Get the fuck away from my wife. Yeah, we're, we're taxpaying citizens. This is, uh, this is a private residence. I... Yeah, you're I'm also a have have property. Wait, what did he say? You're also a necromancer, Miss Rowell, and that is not something I can let fly, unfortunately. Um, oh, what? He seems very calm for someone who has just stabbed his own eye with a pen spring. Right. <laughs> okay, can I, can I say, this is the backyard. backyard. You did say that there were gardens around, you know, fought with stuff. Flower right? pots, yes. Flower uh, so, plots. Flower flower pots. So there's no, by chance, little area of dirt with those big, round, white, shiny rocks. You know what? Just for you, Jeremy, there is. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab one of those rocks, and despite the fact that I'm on the ground, I'm gonna chuck it at that guy. As hard That's as why I love you. And I, I, I'm gonna ask for a body roll for that. My husband can do it. He can do it. I believe in him. He's got good body. <laughs> He's got a good body. <laughs> no, he can't. Oh no! <laughs> oh, no. Oh, All right, no. Jeremy, you, you pathetically sort of try to a little garden rock at him and it just sort of bounces at his feet and he looks at it hysterical disdain yeah and he cocks the hammer on his silence pistol and says come on no more of that okay Um, yeah go ahead go ahead he says now there's four of you and uh the only one of you I need is Miss Natasha. So if someone doesn't start talking, people are going to start dying. I'm sorry. We have sorry. no idea what you are on about. And you showed up with a gun. So you can understand how the situation might seem, you know, a little That's one-sided. Enough. That's enough. I'm talking to Natasha. Yeah. Well, once looks, this uh, once this hits the news stream, Richard, then, uh, Richard, people are going to know about this. actual gun. Well, yeah, he can't just come into our backyard and shoot okay, us all. No, okay. this enough, enough. Let my wife go. She, enough. She's dead. Jeremy, Jeremy. I lean down on my hands and knees and and grab Jeremy's face. I give him a little kiss on his forehead. I love you, baby. And I stand up, but this man is right. What? And I can't let you all die for what I've done. What are, you, what are you talking some, about? Some sanity here. <laughs> and Natasha, you need to do a self roll because you're going against your um Yeah. Your uh, stimulus here. Yep. Yep. Um if you I, fail this, you're not gonna be able to go okay. against your stimulus. I have a I have one hardened tick on myself. Yeah, it's it's uh higher check than that it's directly okay your... is this also for mind yes this is for okay mind. so i rolled a 40 my mind is 70. all right so you put another hardened check in okay. uh self and you are able to go ahead with your plan okay uh yeah i say i'm i'm sorry but I can't, I can't let you all die for this. And I turn to the man. I'm the one you want. Go ahead. Tell them. Tell them. 
finally some sanity in this fucking place. <clears throat> Excuse my language. Um, I will not. I will not. Okay. That's very nice. Um, basically, what's happened is that this woman, Natasha Rao, has uh, raised this man, Jeremy Rao, from the dead. Uh, and when these forces Dude, have met... But you with, need to be locked up in the in a nut house. Jeremy, it's true. You died. What? In a car accident, you died. How that was a ago? year ago? What are you talking about? A year now, maybe? I've been putting those stupid flowers in that stupid box. Well, I think you're bearing the lead here a little bit, Natasha, because uh, you've deprived this fine couple of a child, haven't you? They don't know that. You they don't know that. What? What the hell? Everything Natasha, we've gone what the through? hell is he talking about? <clears throat> you don't know what I'm... You, you, you don't know, so... It's okay because you don't know. Well, it's it's like okay. I well, you, Jeremy. I think Jeremy knows. He was telling me about a young boy, wasn't he? What 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 are you talking about? The oh my god, the picture, the picture, Evelyn, that you saw at Disneyland. What what about it? That that's what they're talking about. But uh, it I, was. Uh, a kid in a soccer outfit and a balloon? He was outside the, the fence just now. Uh, yeah. Are he's, you, uh, he's Natasha, back are you in. saying it? Let me get the, uh, you're some kind of necro. Like, okay, first of all, magic's real. I am not a necromancer. I, I did what any reasonable human would do when they lose their spouse and my life was ruined. I couldn't even work. I couldn't face. My editors and I've reached out to Armin and he showed me this thing. Is Armin around? No. Oh, okay. Yeah, and... it's all about you, isn't it, Mrs. Rao? You killed these people's child. He I died. did it. I did it for my husband. I didn't do it for me. Any one of these people would do the same thing for this man. He is a good man. When he says when he says that do Richard or I gain any kind of recollection, or are we still under the effects of whatever's going on here? Richard Richard starts to remember. He starts to remember, yeah, that, that bed is very familiar. That room wasn't a storage room, always. You sort of have these flashes of... That was our kid. We had had a child. All this time, I've been thinking that we things have been going bad but it's just been us filling in the gaps of what she took from us i didn't take anything i followed the rules and it just said if someone that you love dies i'm lying by the way so i have to roll for that that's fine <laughs> <laughs> yeah i will ferret out the truth if i can okay ferret out the truth <clears throat> so i say if someone that you love dies in this period of time, then the person that you want to come back will come back. 14 and ferrets 25 and mine is 70. So very much. A yeah, success. she's lying. She killed your child. She deliberately killed your child, Richard. He's dead. Look, you I, I, I can't accept this bullshit wherein I'm dead. I'm not dead. I'm right here. I know you're not. And Simon was never alive. That's why it yeah. shouldn't matter. Simon? I get a roll on that now that I have a name. Simon? Yep. Okay, but what am I rolling? Uh no, that you just know that name. Oh, is okay. Familiar to you. I it's also familiar. have another question that I had asked. Uh actually I'm gonna message it to you if that's okay. Sure, that's fine. Um his name was Simon and he's gone. Also you could maintain something you lost can richard remember jeremy dying no no i'm not dead jeremy this is all bullshit well, nut stuff from that well, guy what there the fuck's wrong with your leg that doesn't make any sense you jeremy i don't know you feel like you're starting to pass out from your injury 
And I'm going into shock, guys. No, Jeremy, no. Your eyelids go heavy and you pass into unconsciousness. And oh my God. Let's cut back to Armin, if we will. Armin, you've just pulled up at Natasha's lamppost. You have the flowers and. You, Is it empty? Uh, Is her empty. basket empty? It's empty and the basket has fallen off the post. It's on the floor. Thank. Right. And I don't. How much do I remember about what was on that damn. Let me. Menu. Uh, I'm going to send you a message on Discord. Oh. Um, I need. I. You know, this is obviously something's unraveling. So this was the this was my wits ritual. This was the <laughs> ritual uh, that you can remember. <clears throat> um, but uh -huh. there's something else going on with this lamppost that makes you think that maybe you don't even need these flowers in the first place. Which is that out of the metal that sort of is arranged in a geometrical dodecahedron pattern vertically up in the pylon, mm -hmm. there have been some sort of metal burstings out of the rivets of the post and there's flowers creeping up like vines it was, inside of the it's, post. It's, it's very healthy. Like what it's, she has planted here is growing. It's growing. Yeah, it's growing. It's growing. All right. All right. Maybe that means things are okay. All right. Um, I'm going to, I mean, I brought, I got the flowers, so I'll just drape uh, the handle of the basket over some of the efflorescence or maybe where the metal curls out mm -hmm. and I'll put the flowers in and I'll uh, address the consciousness of the universe through that gesture and then go back to the house and see if that creepy guy in the white van is still there and what's going on. Yeah, you do so. And um, what disturbs you maybe uh, makes you feel not so great about this is that yeah, when you put the flowers up to the lamppost, they wither into crepey paper. But the flowers oh. that are coming out of the lamppost itself, they're healthy and robust looking. Very healthy. Are they like flowers that I've seen before? Is it is it daylilies and calendula or is it Audrey too? I mean... <laughs> How much do you know about flowers? They they don't look like Audrey too. But how much do you know about flowers? Do you mind? Uh, it's yeah, it's not a specialty, but let's see. Oh, twenty three is quite good. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have a skill that you could put that under? That's uh, it's a, it's under my general education. It's not. Yeah, that's good. General education. Um. So yeah, you realize that <clears throat> while these flowers are sort of similar to other flowers you've seen. They definitely look somewhat more colorful. They have mm -hmm. very odd, ultra colorful color coloration and they're large and they don't resemble any flower you've ever seen, really. So maybe we're dealing with invasive species, but on a larger scale, Possible. they're not they're a little and it's dark it's getting it's just about it's just after magic hour so they're bright and they shouldn't nothing should be really bright right now nope i didn't i mean i just i didn't mean any harm all right back to the house they blend in perfectly with the pink and blue sky as you walk back to your car start it up do a drive roll do you have drive i do uh, my that's a speed 
Right. It's a speed. Yeah, it's a speed. So my speed roll is my speed number is 40 and I rolled a 37. My drive is only 15, so I didn't drive very well. Okay, so you're you start up your car and you're only going cuz you're pulling out. You're only going at like uh maybe like 10, 15 miles per hour. And as you drive past the lamppost, your car swerves and crashes into the lamppost. Oh. Like a, like it was magnetized kind of like it was magnet exactly like it was magnetized and your hood unfortunately it's it's the 1997 Corolla caramel color uh it's smoking mm. it's busted the radiator it looks like mm. okay so I'm gonna grab the groceries and hoof it because things are aft it's not time for the insurance company and it's probably it's a four minute drive, so a twenty minute walk. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you're hoofing it though. Yeah. I mean let's put that I... twenty minutes and a half <clears throat> for the sake of argument. Sure. And you arrive back to the house and see that uh, there appears to be some crazy chaos going on. There's a man with a gun pointing it at Natasha, and Jeremy has been injured. He's passed out. And with that, let's cut back to Jeremy. Jeremy, you wake up at the wheel of what car do you drive, Jeremy? Um, oh, I don't know. What year are we in right now? Modern day. Modern day. Uh, Prius. All right. So you're at the wheel of your Prius, and um, you're driving down the road, and you just wake up there, driving down the road oh. in the Prius. Oh. I don't fall asleep at the wheel. What a weird dream. Yeah, you realize that... <clears throat> You're in the middle of an intersection, uh, and you're just stopped there. There looks to be a uh, Ford Escalade or uh, whatever Escalade coming towards you at about 40 miles per hour. Oh, uh, how close do I have time to hit the gas and get out of the way? You have time. All right, I'll hit the gas. Right. It doesn't go. The Escalade hits you, you flip over and you can feel the bones in your leg that Bunch. used to exist break. You can feel, the last thing you feel is your neck as your car flips over, the roof caves in and your neck goes 180. Uh. You're dead. And then you wake up in your backyard. Gary! So, government spook, whoever you are, what happens to her next then? Is it... Well, I'm not really worried about her. Uh, see, the thing is, this is all part of a bigger ritual. He's not seen you yet, Armin. And what i'm really looking for is sort of like a drag net thing you get the little fish and then you move up i'm not concerned about miss Rawl here if i was she'd be dead already uh, i want to know where you got the ritual from and who gave it to you and armin you hear him say that as you are behind him <laughs> <laughs> he's facing away from you uh well i don't so and this is in the backyard of the ockley home yeah not visible from the street particularly no yeah so i'm going under those circumstances to have to try to take the bottle of bourbon and introduce it to the back of this <laughs> <head>. <laughs> Well, let's see if that introduction goes well. Robot. Not really, not really my skill set. Right. 
Ah, uh-huh, 27. <gasps> okay. That's good for body. And uh, general athletics doesn't make it. It doesn't make it for struggle either. It's Oh, well. Well, but, was it an expensive bourbon? It's nice. It's, it, the glass is thick. I mean, this is not, yeah. He paid for $20. Seven years. Yeah. yeah. I guess every dog has his day. And you, bam, whack him across the head with this bottle of bourbon. Blood goes everywhere, and he falls on the floor. He's still conscious, though. He just is, like, shocked. I grab the gun immediately. Okay, do a body roll. All right, do a speed roll. Can, uh, can Richard go against him for it? 39. Oh, I made it by one point. Right. Oh, my God. You grab the gun. I I turn it on, on everybody. I'm like, you leave me and Jeremy alone. I love this man. I know you all love him, too, and none of you would have blamed me, and I will put a bullet in your head if you think you're going to get between him and I. I finally got him back, and I see your son's face every night, and I have to live with those demons, but at least I will live with them. Natasha, they're not my child. Honey, honey, they're not the bad guys. That guy's the bad guy. You, You don't have a child. He is the bad guy, Natasha. Relax. We've taken the gun away from the crazy person, right? That's what's important. Uh, given, I give Armin the gun. Now, Max Maxwell, given my character's obsession and the truth that I now know, yeah, um, I still don't have an answer to the question that I sent you. Oh, sorry. That's all right. I completely forgot about that. <laughs> um, yeah, sure. Can I go for it? Yeah. Okay. What do I need to roll? Nothing. Uh-oh. It's in your hands. Perfect. Um, I'm going to drill Armin um, with it. You're so I would like to, I'm going to put one basically yep. directly into his head. Well, roll uh, speed. I, I didn't realize we were doing PvP, but uh, here we are. Uh, I got a 13. Are, Armin's dead. What the hell? Oh. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, he's dead. He, he's He's been shot in the head. I point the gun at Evelyn. And it's, a, it's a Mexican standoff. She's like, you killed my son. You killed the only man that had the power to give my husband back, you son of a bitch. And I shoot her. I, I, can we roll, do like the karmic shot? I love it. Can we do roll the karmic speed. shot? Roll speed, yeah. We do the shot. reservoir dogs. What are you talking yeah. about, yeah, man? Exactly. A twenty-seven. Oh, he. Oh, you beat me. I got a fifty-four. Oh where my you, god. Where are you aiming, Natasha? Uh broad, broadest part of the body. I've read enough books. <clears throat> you shoot so, uh, Evelyn in the heart. Blood uh, spurts out from her chest in like a fountain onto your face. And she falls to the floor, dead. The drama. <laughs> Richard, what are you doing? Richard is a little stunned. Like he, the 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 fuck, Natasha. She made me do it. You saw it. I didn't have any choice. She pointed a gun at me. All I wanted to do was save my husband. Yeah, your husband. And get the fuck out of my yard. Come on, Jeremy. And at this point, the agent from the UIU gets up. Dude, he feels the back of his skull. Can I looks, shoot him? <laughs> he looks dazed. Uh, well, you already did two. Uh, I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> you already did a double murder. So I'm going to say he, uh, he has some time to do yep. this. And he... Uh, he looks directly at you and says, oh, I guess I'll have to do this the hard way. With the spring, oh, no. right? Oh, Still, no. Thanks, thanks for that major charge, uh, guy. Uh, and he looks at Armin. And with that, your bones start opening up, erupting out of your body. And Who's? this is Dash Natasha. Is... Oh. And yeah, you're right. He does take the spring and stick it in you and your flesh sort of sucks the spring in directly into your brain. 
Oh. You're, you're dead. You're. All right, wait. So it's just me and Richard left. <clears throat> yeah. My headphones ran out of battery. Sorry. Ah. Uh, the... Wait, can you guys talk? Yeah. yeah no, can we you hear me? Hear yeah. Yep. Shit. Oh, you One can't. Second. You can't oh, he hear us. Um, try muting and unmuting yes i can hear you guys now um okay. so yeah natasha armin and evelyn are dead oh my god i love jeremy, this game uh jeremy he is he's going there. for he's going for the gun on that uh natasha has just dropped and what are you doing jeremy there's another gun that evelyn has dropped Near. Oh well, Richard. Richard will uh, have to go for the gun, but uh, he's watching Jeremy, and he's not even sure. Actually, he's not going to go for the gun. Fuck it. He, if Armin uh, brought back stuff, he'll grab the bag of groceries and head over to the grill. Okay, <laughs> uh, Jeremy, can you just do <laughs> for me? I feel like I'm on acid right now. <gasps> I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Can you do a speed roll for me? Speed. I got an 05 out of 60. Oh. But right, let's see. don't you want to get close to the 60? Yeah. So yes, I'm you do. So this. let's see who's faster. He might fail. Come on, honey. Is he rolling? He got this. Oh, sorry. Okay. You won't believe this. All right. You got a 99. I got oh. triple zero. I don't know if that's good or bad. That's oh, bad. That's very that's bad. bad. <laughs> it doesn't oh, matter. No. You're just grilling, Richard. You're just grilling. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm at the grill. Jeremy. <laughs> yeah, hey, thing, the burger slid you're off. The one who went for the gun. Oh, okay. But Jeremy, yeah, you you uh you pick up the gun, point it at him, and he just sort of looks like oh fuck, and you drill him right between the eyes. His brain goes everywhere, um, and he's dead. What do you guys do? Oh, that's the what government the guy he killed. Okay. He yeah, killed oh, the government yeah. guy. Yeah. Oh, okay. we kill you. What do you guys do? You're you're my confidant. I tell you all my secrets. <laughs> um, well, except for one. Uh, yeah, one one really big one. But uh, but uh, I'm like, period. what the fuck, Richard? Call nine one one. We can blame all of this on this guy. Fuck off! It's time that somebody operated this barbecue who knows how to use it. <laughs> okay. okay i think your wife would say that you're suffering some sort of mental mental call 911 i don't even know if you're really here and i'm right here as you say i'm right here jeremy you begin to fade out fade out and the gun goes it's the the gun goes to the floor, and we leave the scenario. We end the scenario with Richard alone, <laughs> grill master. Panic grilling. <laughs> Just flipping the burger. You have the steaks. Plenty of fresh meat now. <laughs> you have you have the steaks on the grill, and after about five ten minutes, they're done. They're perfectly cooked. Per what what <laughs> what did you how did you cook them medium rare medium Me, oh we you know what just outright rare just enough of a, yeah, a sear yeah. on the top and on both sides and These grab things one of, are jumping off the table at you but they're mm, delicious and grab one of armin's beers and uh sit back grab and uh you move somebody's dead leg off of a lawn chair <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you look at uh out will end as you look out at the pool and your son walks out the glass doors into the backyard and says, Dad, what, what happened? I don't know, Simon, but come on over. I'll get you a burger. Dad, and, are those uh, people dead? Don't worry about them. They're, uh, we'll take care of them in the morning. But, oh, my God. But for now, come have a burger. I've got some ketchup here. I'll put on it for you. And Wow. And there we go. That's the end of Lampos and Bloom. Oh my goodness. <laughs> standing O. Standing yeah, O. Yeah, that was standing fantastic. <laughs> well, that, that might be one of the best Call of Cthulhu games I've ever played.
Oh, oh man, it's not Call of Cthulhu. It's technically uh, right. It's um, <laughs> yeah. it's unknown yeah, yeah, you guys, Wow, you guys did wow, amazing. The role playing was amazing. I oh, that that was just man. that was just, that was just really great. Hats off to these guys. Explain to us. Dude. Explain to me. Since yeah. I seem to be the only normal dead person here. You know, I didn't know either. I, I didn't know any normal flowers. person. Yep. <laughs> the only thing. The only thing I kind of wondered was, holy shit! If I'm a ghost, I've I've been sleeping with Evelyn. That was my question too. <laughs> All right. So, uh, can we can we start off by just going round robin and everybody revealing their secrets? Sure. What was what was let's say start with Armin because he doesn't have as much of a secret as everybody else. What was your secret? Yeah. Armin? I we you know I accidentally found a, a ritual described at the back of a Chinese member uh, menu in a in a book, and uh, it was about bringing back someone. Like I you know I practice Wicca. I'm in touch with the spiritual world, but this just seemed a little bit wackadoo. But Natasha was in mourning after Jeremy's accident, and it was about death from an auto automobile. So I shared it with her. I didn't think she'd try to do it or be able to do it. And I don't really remember that she did it. Right. Uh, but she's been, you know, calling me up drunk and saying things about it. So... All right, That's... and with that, we sort of figured out Natasha's secret, but Natasha, what was your secret? Sure. Uh, so my secret is that six months ago, uh, Jeremy was killed in a car crash. I couldn't deal with my life, and Armin saved mine by giving me a copy of the ritual. Um, the price was that I had exchanged the life of someone that I actually loved, so my s nephew Simon was the choice. And... Um, hung his boots on the lamppost and the next time that he drove by it in the car he was killed in an accident and everything reset immediately i woke up next to my husband they woke up without a son yeah and, and then, then you had uh, to keep feeding it flowers every uh, the first of every month i had to put new flowers in so basically i ended up doing it you know every three days and, Wait, uh, why 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 every three days well, you have to put them in every month, but if they start to wilt or fall apart, they, they do have to stay fresh, right? So that's why if they're gone, oh, okay. right? Magic starts to... Yes, correct. Um, and so for when they... Oof, I had no idea what to do when they <laughs> wilted. I was like, oh my God. I'm a horror writer. Now it's happening to me. Right. And the ritual does state that if the flowers are removed, then the Magic's ritual gone. is broken. Oh, so, so when someone had removed them, it started to untether. I'm assuming that some some rando, or the wind could have just blown them out of the, or something. Well, that yeah. that is the GM's secret, who, which right. we will reveal uh, in uh, a second. But Evelyn, in due what time. was your secret? So Evelyn's. I mean, it wasn't really much of a secret. <laughs> 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 um. So Evelyn's secret uh, is that um, sorry, I'm uh, is that she was involved. She's cheating. She's cheating. Yes, she was involved with Jeremy, um, and had been for I think it's the last three months, something like that. Um, yeah. And that she had had a positive pregnancy test, but she's not exactly certain whose it is. Whose it is? What a weird uh, twist! I feel better about it now. Oh, there's yeah. there's more to the twist than that. Oh um, no! And uh, if there is, I don't have that information. The other paragraph is that, and I apologize for basically ignoring this one, DM. Um, but the last paragraph is she does have a sense that something's severely off. That was your um, son being missing. Yeah. Well, yeah. right. But what I mean is, is the the prompt I received was that something was severely off, and I learned that it was, hey, there was a child missing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. And so that's that's the extent of what I have on my uh on my character sheet. And right, I just and lost Jeremy. a die. Hang on. Okay. So Jeremy, for me, even though you were dead, was your real secret. But what was your well, other secret? Well, I mean, I didn't know that secret, so yeah. that wasn't my secret. Um, uh, me and Natasha were very much in love. We'd been married for a long time, and about six months ago, she stopped having sex with me, and she—it would seem like she wouldn't touch me anymore. 
And after three months of that, I kind of felt, you know, like I needed some sort of outlet. I knew Richard because Richard, because when you're a cop, you need someone to talk to about the trauma that you see. And Richard had been the guy that I was telling things to because I needed to get it off my chest. Anyways, I started sleeping with Evelyn with absolutely no intention of doing anything with Evelyn. It was just like, I'm getting something out of it. She's getting Uh something out of it. And this is just temporary until Natasha comes around and starts giving me BJs again. <laughs> that's hilarious. But yeah, I, I had no no interest in Evelyn at all, really. Wow. That's Aww. funny. Rip. Well, and then finally, uh, and, Richard. What was your yes. Secret? So Richard had a, had a few, nothing too, too spicy, but yeah, he was kind of pumping Jeremy for information that he was using it to write stories and he was kind of skewing the cops and articles and stuff like that and uh, was getting closer and, and people were getting closer and closer to figuring out who his source was, which would have probably got Jeremy fired. Um, yeah. His other one was, <laughs> yes, that he suspected his wife was cheating, but he had the wrong person is that he thought it was Armin, the new creepy guy who was hanging around showing up and knew all kinds of weird impressive stuff so he was convinced himself more and more that's what and finally yes he was sure something was missing so he went back to the car to look for and he continually felt he was missing something but couldn't figure out what it was and every time he got headed that direction he lost his course of action and and couldn't quite place it but (laughs) yep and now let's go to my secret what was actually going on uh, basically this, uh, you guys, uh, beautifully missed this because I, Ooh. I did not want you to find it, but oh, okay. obviously if you found it out, it's one thing, but, um, <clears throat> basically there was a guy called Keith Whitney, um, and his daughter who, uh, was a frequenter of your library, Armin, and his daughter died in a car accident and it basically ruined him. He uh, lost everything. And he was involved with the occult, uh, with the occult underground. And so he found this fair exchange ritual, right? Uh, and he wanted to bring his daughter back, but found that he really didn't love anybody anymore. So he couldn't exchange a life for his daughter's life. So he found there was another part of the ritual that said that if he could get 10 people to perform this ritual in one city, the city of Seattle, then he could make uh, a wish for a miracle to happen. And so he disseminated this ritual in his library that he loved and uh, grief counseling places basically places where people who had recently been bereaved by car accidents would find them. And in the book that it was in was like, a, uh, if you remember, Armin was a, a book about like uh, losing someone. Um, and <clears throat> so eventually 10 people did the ritual uh, in the city and the lampposts went into bloom and Keith got his wish. He got his daughter back, but obviously, in doing that, he called upon himself the cruel ones to uh, torture him forever. But that's Fair a enough. different thing because he brought that's... someone back from the dead. What an interesting uh, story! Pyramid scheme, necromancy, never. <laughs> thank you, Scott Dorward. <laughs> yeah, <thank laughs> great you. game. Uh, yeah, thank yeah, you, Max. Great game. So, yes. so that that whole bit with this guy Keith, um, that's something we would never have figured out. Like, that was what that was what the the UIU agent was trying to get out of you. He was basically uh, leading up to uh, he was basically trying to prevent the the cruel ones are basically um uh, they're like people who keep reality they're like hounds of tindalos basically. Okay. Um and so if reality gets out of line, they're going to come in and fuck shit up and like cause a lot of damage. And but so force basically it back that, to a baseline of normalcy. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, so that that guy was a member of the UIU, uh, which I just made up. Uh, and he was 
trying to restore everything to baseline reality before one of those guys would show up and cause a lot of damage. Right. He was obviously an epiduromancer. Um, so when you hit him on the what back of the head, David, he had he gained a major charge from getting wounded, and it gave him the ability to uh, obviously kill Natasha. Oh, uh, and that's why he did his eye too. Yeah, is it him? That, right. He wounds he, himself to get energy. Wounding himself gets energy, right? So when he did his, but why eye, pick the eye? Because <laughs> it has to mean something. That's that's what yeah, all the magic in unknown arms yeah. is about. Jeez. Also, oh, so there's a whole magic system it's, we don't know it's about. Icky. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, this is a street level game, so you're not. You guys don't know anything about magic except for yeah. rituals. Mm -hmm. which got passed down to you you never knew about it right 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 okay so yeah. that was basically it yeah he he showed uh, up he was trying to fix stuff but he failed he died he got killed <laughs> unknown armies can go really deep but usually right. you get that after after playing a lot of episodes yeah. right all right cool our players included cody mckinnis Gordon Lewis, David Gasway, Mike McKen, and myself with Max Meltzer as the Game Master. We have a Discord server where you can chat with other members, you can set up private games, and you can learn the finer arts of gameplay and game mastering. We provide audio-only versions of our shows free for you to download from Spotify, Podbean, or iTunes. If you'd like to help support our show, please visit our Patreon account. Just a dollar to a month helps us a lot. Like, share, and subscribe to our channel and punch the bell icon for updates on our latest shows and leave us some comments. We enjoy reading them and answer any questions you might have. This is Tom Rayleigh, together with all the members of our gaming club, inviting you to journey with us once again into the darkness for another adventure into the occulted realms of magic and conspiracies at the Unknown Army's role-playing game. Until next time, good luck and good gaming.